So I want to start a new series on this channel where I read best-selling books and then watch their horrible movie adaptations. Allegedly horrible. I haven't seen them yet, but according to ratings online, and when I say ratings, I mean Rotten Tomato scores and IMDb scores, and just kind of general consensus for people who have read these books and watched these movies. So to start off the series, I've chosen three different books. Each book is going to get its own video. So we're going to read one of the books, watch the movie immediately after, but I have Aaron Aragon, City of Bones, the Mortal Instruments series, the first book, and Ender's Game. So this video is going to be dedicated to Ender's Game. So what I know about this book is that it is sci-fi and that's kind of all I really know about it. The only other sci-fi that I've really recently read is the Heir to the Empire Star Wars trilogy. I made a whole video about that if you want to go check it out. So Ender's Game actually has the highest rating out of the three books I have. It has an average of 4.31 out of five stars on Goodreads out of over over a million reviews, which is a very good rating. It also actually has the best received movie out of the three as well. I still don't think people like it that much, especially the book readers, but also I have no idea. Watch me go watch the movie and like love it. So I'm currently about halfway through with Ender's Game and I am just loving this book so far. It's been so hard to put down and I've been flying through it. I didn't think that this book would do that for me. Honestly, going into it, I totally did not expect it, but I was kind of hooked from the beginning. Like you're following this kid who is so, so smart. You're seeing him go through battle school. It's crazy because the majority of it is his inner monologue and you're just following him through all his thought processes and to see how he's learning about being a leader and then also kind of starting to distrust the adults around him and just like the system in general is just super fascinating especially because it is a child but like he's so smart so it feels like an adult at the same time but it's still the mind of a child and a lot of the way he rationalizes things is still from like kind of like an emotional child's mind <laughs> gosh i am absolutely in shock of what just happened this reveal what they did what this whole time they've been doing what wow just i feel like i need to compose myself because i am just wow I've literally been rereading the same page like five times because I just cannot believe what I just read. I'm so in shock. Wow, this book is so freaking good, y'all. Go read this book. Wow. I am in utter shock of how good this book was. Five stars, immediately, immediately five stars. I don't even have to think about it. It was so good. So much happened throughout the book, but the ending was just like, wow. It's interesting because this has several more books in the series. I think it has like one, two, three, four, five, five more, but this felt like it could have been a definitive ending. It felt like, okay, I could have read this one and felt like I got a completed story, but I'm still so excited to see where it goes in the future because I definitely want to read the next one and just see what happens next. Even though this could have been an ending in and of itself, I wonder if this was originally just supposed to be a single book and then he decided to write more or what regardless i loved it it's so crazy because you were reading about a kid a child he was six years old when it started and he kind of progressively got older but he was a kid the entire time pretty much 
but he was so intelligent and the way he spoke was like an adult. And the whole premise of the book, he's going through different simulations, different games, trying to help prepare him and test his strategy and his knowledge. And it was just so fascinating to read about and to see how he handled different things. And I just kept just being in shock and awe and how intelligent this kid is. And I just loved reading the story and all the kids around him and all the characters. I highly recommend it. Probably one of my new favorite books of all time. But you know what? Now that's making me nervous to watch the movie. Like I really want to watch the movie and I'm looking forward to it, but I'm also nervous because I don't, I don't know what the movie's going to be like. Like what if they do something weird or what if it, I mean, it's not going to ruin anything I read, obviously, but you know, I feel like when you read a book and then you want to go watch the movie, you're excited to see those events on the screen. I don't know if they changed some stuff or if they left some stuff out. Part of me feels like they're going to have to leave stuff out because I don't think this all could fit into one single movie. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'm a little bit nervous. Oh, I'm so excited. Are those the buggers? 50 years ago, an alien force known as the Formix attacked Earth. Wait, Formix? Do they change the name from buggers to Formix? Why'd they do that? Andrew Wigan. Andrew Ender Wigan. Please report to the infirmary. His name wasn't Ender. Like, that wasn't his middle name, was it? I thought it was just a nickname. Why am I, like, looking at my book like I'm gonna be able to find the answer immediately? Oh, he's getting his monitor out. I feel like I'm literally being that an obnoxious person that's like, well, actually, in the source material, like, that's literally me right now. And I'm not apologizing. Knocking him down was the first fight. I wanted to win all the next ones, too. Mm. So they'd leave me alone. And you should have asked a grown-up for help. I'd like to offer you a place in our program. Okay. But, but you took away my monitor. The final what step about in the, the it's evaluation the is why? to see what happens when the monitor is removed. Okay. First of all, it wasn't always the final step. It was in his, in his specific case, right? <laughs> I feel like I'm second guessing myself now. I don't want to be like an um actually person, but I feel like I just, I literally just read it the other day. Like I finished it like two days ago. It's fresh in my mind. I'm Ender. Ender? What kind of name is that? What's your name? Name's Bean. But Bean. what? Wait, Bean is not supposed to be here yet. We don't mean Bean till later. When he becomes a commander, that's when Bean comes in. We don't have Bean yet. Bean was an integral, integral character. Bean was like one of my favorite characters. Why is Bean here so early? It feels weird because it's like, there's definitely pieces of the story there. And then there's some parts you can understand like, okay, we have to skip around. Like we have to, to cut some out because we just cannot fill the time frame. But on the other hand, it almost feels like I'm watching something with things missing. Like there's no context to certain things. And I wonder how somebody who didn't read the book would take it. I mean, you probably just like take it kind of at face value. But for me, it's like, oh my gosh, there's so much more to the, the like more levels to all of this. And then also the whole bean thing. Like, I don't know why they introduced his character right here, right now. What about a lie are they not gonna put a lie in uh, you would think okay maybe that's who they would show as the friend earlier on because like that was more chronological like bean was like a very specific instance and he was like a younger character than ender you know he related to him because he reminded him of himself and then he also had to go through what he went through you know what no it doesn't make sense because here on the shuttle was like such an integral moment for him colonel graf basically singled him out kind of started to get all the other kids to dislike him because he wanted to toughen him up basically and then he does the same for Bean later on and this was integral and like are we not gonna get that are we not getting that oh he's gonna orient himself he knows how to reorient himself that's his special thing oh. ew wait this is why y'all weren't supposed to eat for 48 hours before what are you doing Wigan I think so oh okay here we go something funny because in zero gravity there is no right side up you may think you're vertical and we may be horizontal. No lie. You know what he's talking about? Oh. Yes, sir. There's a lie. There's only one kid on this launch with any brains at all so far, and that's Ender Wigan. Okay, here they all, they're all like, oh, Ender. I mean, at least they kept that part in. That was like pretty key to his character development. Him not really having a lot of friends, him having to be isolated. That's what they kept doing. Oh, so this is battle school. Sir, you made them hate me. I told them you were the best. We need a Julius Caesar, a Napoleon. We hope that will- You know what else too? Didn't he have a fight on there? He totally hit a kid. It was Bernard. We didn't have that fight. I feel like that was kind of an important scene too. Because that like established dominance for him. Wigan, get up here. 
This will be cool to see how the battle room looks because I don't even know how I- Oh, you know what? That makes sense how it would look like that. That's a cool battle room. I'll allow it. I'll accept it. I mean, this movie does have some pretty cool visuals. <laughs> he just hit that? Weren't those the stars? Didn't they call them the stars? So are we not gonna get to see Bean say suck on this and fling himself out into the battle room? Because that was like one of my favorite moments in the book. <laughs> like he was so sassy for a little six-year-old. We train in hand-to-hand -hand combat. He keeps us in shape. And aggressive. And up! He had to sign up for those classes on his own because he was afraid for himself. They didn't just teach him that. He had to go seek that out on, on his own because they didn't really have a need for it because they were in zero gravity. So they didn't really do hand-to-hand -hand stuff. Welcome to games and recreation. Oh, okay. Are they going to show his fantasy game? Control I want to see the skull of the giant. Show me the skull of the giant. <gasps> oh, is this the giant? won't let me assess him one-on-one. -on -one. I need some other way to know what he's feeling. I don't care how he's feeling. I want him to toughen up and learn how to lead. Well, before we make him a leader, let's see how he deals with frustration. I feel like a lot of this Major Anderson in here is like leading things with Ender, whereas it was Graf who was really like pushing the issue a lot. You know, Anderson was kind of like, I'm here for the game. I love the game. One more time. Can I watch? Sure. I love you a lie, but you were not involved in this moment. This was something Ender had to do on his own. All right. That's what they want from us. Follow the, the rules, you lose. Choose violence, you win. I've never seen anyone do that. He's perfect. Okay, he just was not there. Like, I just feel like we're skipping so much, you know? I know they have to cut stuff out for the movie, but like, we're just missing so much context. But they said they were gonna isolate him, and yet he has friends like every two seconds. A lie was definitely his closest friend, but they weren't together all the time. Like, he just couldn't be like that with anybody. He didn't have the opportunity because Graf didn't let him, because that was the point. He wanted to isolate him. And now he already like hates the system. He doesn't hate the system till a little bit later. It's starting to feel so watered down to me almost. Is this what happens when you read books and then watch the movie adaptation? Does this happen every time? Ender Wigan, you are assigned to Salamander Army, Commander Bonso Madre, effective immediately. Oh, he's finally going to Salamander to see Bonso! They're promoting you. At the little ripe old age of six, even though you definitely look older than six. <gasps> say it, say it, say it! Assalamu alaikum. Peace to you. That was like one of my favorite moments in the book. A big piece of context that's missing is that there's like an absence of religion. So it was like a really big thing when a lie said that to him. And then from then on, he almost like saw love in him, like saw like he was a true friend to him because he remembered like his parents praying over him and stuff like that in secrecy because they weren't allowed to because they had to renounce their religion. Did I just see Haley Seinfeld? Is she Petra? Wigan? He's from Hannah Montana. Funny how much taller he is when he's literally supposed to be like six years old. I understand why they didn't get an actual like six year old because you needed somebody who could act the part too. And I mean, there's some great child actors out there, but like a six year old, you know, I do understand that. But I think it does kind of take away from the gravity of the situation that he was a literal six year old getting promoted years and years earlier than he was supposed to. Like, I feel like we're missing how brilliant, intelligent he was. You. Wigan, you hang back near the gate. Bonesaw might tend to be a man short without him. He knows nothing about our formation, Stink. He'll only get in the way. You come out last. We also missed the part where Dink was the one who actually requested him. That was a big thing too. Like he he saw something in him and he was the one who convinced Bonso to bring him in. Hang back and observe. We don't need you. Step aside. Hey, but this is all pretty accurate though. Like what he did to him here, go, this, go, go, you know, go, go, this was go, good. Go, go, go. How he made him have to stay, wait it out, not be a part of anything. But Ender saw in him what he could do differently as the leader. He learned from him, not in the way you would think, but learned what not to do from him. We gotta break him up. Fly, you lock with me. Petra rides chariot. Got it? Wait, pause. <clears throat> Ender 
was the one who thought of this strategy. Why are they doing it now? Who is doing it now under Bonzo's command? I'm sorry, what? No. Ender thought of this little chariot thing later. Later on. That was like a big thing. Why is it happening now? Bonzo wasn't a good commander. Like, I mean, they would win stuff, but like they didn't do strategies like this. This is Ender's game. Ender's game. <laughs> I feel like they made this so much more dramatic than it was. <laughs> like, what the heck? Okay. Honestly, all he did was kind of creep up on the side, go in, nobody saw him, and he like just shot them real quick. And, like, that was it. This was like so epic. You don't like taking orders from Bonzo? No, sir. Perhaps you'd prefer to give them yourself. How'd you like to lead your own army? Dragon army. Is Ender literally not gonna freaking kill Bonzo in the bathroom? Like, are we not killing Bonzo? We're not gonna kill Bonzo in the bathroom. The six-year-old boy is not gonna kill Bonzo in the bathroom, what? Welcome to Dragon Army. Bunking will be arranged with youngest at the front and veterans at the back. Ender, every other commander has their seniors closest to the door. Well, I don't intend to be like every other commander. What am I doing here, Ender? You don't even like me. I didn't select this army, Bernard. Bernard was in his army in this movie? Well, I guess they didn't really make him like his full-on bully bully here. Like, we didn't get to actually see everything that happened, but okay. Wake up! Battle with Salamander and Leopard in five. Two armies at once, the colonel is changing the rules. In a battle with the Formix, there will be no rules. When you have a book that has so much inner monologue, it's kind of hard to translate that to a movie. So maybe that's why, like, they needed somebody else to say it so that everybody understood it. But, like, so much of it was lost because it was, like, Ender was the one figuring this out and being like, oh, this isn't fair. They're putting two armies against us at once. Like, they're cheating the game. We barely even saw any of the game before this. So you didn't really see how Ender was as a commander. And now we're, like, thrown into this if what I think it is is gonna happen. Two armies burn enough. They had to block your view too. What are you doing here? What? Colonel said you needed a sub. Guess what? you got your odds for zero with me and the other team. Don't so agree to this. Colonel Graf's orders. You didn't have a choice. Uh Okay, there is too much camaraderie. This was not a thing. First of all, Petra did not like him for a while because he beat her. He was beating everybody. This young commander was just coming in winning every single game. What? Neil. What? I have an idea. Neil. All right, this is where he's doing his little special little thing. Petra was a commander of her own. Her own squad. Like, why did they take that away from her character? She was her own commander. Gosh, it's just like... Uh, it's just so difficult because I know they had to cut stuff out for a movie, but like, there's just so much context missing that like, this just feels like, like a little action-y, little sci-fi, little fun, little kid, young adult little thing. But the book had so much more, like, there was, it was so much deeper. Like, so much psychological stuff, just, uh I feel like we're missing Ender getting frustrated with the adult here. Like, that was a big thing, is like, he was feeling upset about the adult, just like, using him and using them, and just, like, he didn't want to play the game anymore, and like, we haven't seen that at all. Oh, is he gonna kill Bonzo? We're finally killing Bonzo? Come on, fight! Come on! Come on, fight! Oh my gosh. That's how they did this? What? I feel like the problem is like, you don't get to see Ender use like, cause he was so young and small compared to the rest of them. He had to use his mind to get out of these situations. He wasn't just like, physically as strong as them and like they had him like training and stuff like yeah he did some of that but he had to use his mental like fortitude to get out of these situations and like we're just missing such a big aspect and like is Bonzo not dying because like that was a big thing like Ender didn't realize he died in that moment and he just thought he got sent home in the end like it looks like they're about to save him here Ender I am so sorry Major what we should never have allowed you to be alone not now Major. What? This was not a part of it. They wanted to isolate him. Uh, and also immediately after this happened, they literally came in and was like, you have another battle. Like what? We're missing so much like of Ender's frustrations because they kept pushing him so hard. Like they, they kind of pitted it against the kids, which obviously Bonzo was like a thing that happened. But like, what the heck? I feel like I'm just getting so frustrated. Like I feel like I'm getting frustrated watching this. Oh my gosh, what the heck? 
All right, I mean, this definitely did happen, but I just feel like we skipped so much stuff, it doesn't feel the same. Like, it doesn't mean the same thing. Like, when these moments were happening in the book, it was, like, insane. We just skipped so much. I just, I feel bad for somebody who watched the movie and didn't read the book. I mean, even if you like the movie, but it's just, like, you're just, you're missing out on so much, you know? I've been sitting by Bonso's bed. What? Waiting for him to wake up. Heck no! You didn't even know he died! You didn't know he died! Uh, and this was not the- I mean, like, it was a big part of what happened, and it was a big part of why he felt the way he did, but, like, he had other reasons to feel this way, to want to come back to Earth, to want to just, like, do nothing. He didn't want to fight anymore. He didn't want to play the game anymore. Like, it was about the war in general. Like, Bonzo was, yes, a big part of it, but, like, there was so much more to it. I thought we were going back to battle school. Or not. Where are we going? Much further. Right, he's going to command school. Are they gonna gloss over the fact that the journey literally Dear took Valentine, three months? I must now travel to our advanced command base near the Formix home planet. Where I'll what? Begin fight command school was so freaking secretive that the people who flew them there on the shuttle, the guy who literally, the pilot who flew them there, had to live there until the war was over. Like, once you went there, you couldn't leave. And he's writing letters back home to her. Yeah, right. Not very hospitable, is it? We took it from the Formix 27 years after Rackham's victory. Why did he just tell him that now? That was supposed to be revealed later by Mazur Rackham himself. Is he not gonna be here? He better show up. He better freaking show up because that was a crazy moment. Like, I just feel like all these things like were like big reveals and they're just like, oh, this, this, and this, and this, and this, and this. Like, what? Is it sad that I'm like waiting for this movie to be over? <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I don't think I'm enjoying that that much. <gasps> oh, f are we finally getting Mazur Rackham? You wanna fight me? Is that the test? To see if I'll attack an old man. Why is Ender almost like kind of annoying? Mazur Rackham. What? You thought I was dead? I've been building models of your plane since I was six years old. I mean, none of this happened. He literally walked out the door and then was like, okay, then we were like together often. All right, okay, now they're watching the Her, videos I together. I mean, this was well done. The enemy's in red. What pattern do you see? Seems random, but it's not. Okay, so Mazarakum was supposed to be somebody Ender looked up to. He was supposed to be one of the few people that was ever actually smarter than him that he could actually learn from who saw things he didn't. And he was the one who initiated this moment here. Like, hey, what do you see? Because all it was was the footage ended after the explosion. Like, that was it. Nobody else could figure out why they all stopped. He had a theory, and then he was like, hey, Ender, do you see this too, basically? And then Ender was able to figure out what he had saw. Nobody else really wanted to believe it. Like, I feel like because they didn't show Ender's skill level and his intelligence as much earlier on, they used this moment to do it, but you kind of, like, took away from Mazer Rackham's moment as well, because, like, he was one of the few who was more intelligent than Ender, which was very rare, obviously. Father's a Maori. Lost him in the war. Tamaku is a way to connect to my past, to my inner skin. It's a way for me to speak for the dead. Speak for the dead? That was not his line. What? Speak for the dead is something that happens way later. Why is that happening now? First of all, he didn't even have the face tattoos. Second of all, I mean, I guess he had to say he was Maori, but like they had established that prior, like before he even showed back up again. Second of all, I mean, third of all, I don't even know what of all I'm on. He didn't go into hiding because of that because like everything happened. They immediately launched the third invasion and he wanted to be on one of the ships that went off to do it because like it was going to take like years and years like 70 plus years so they did it immediately obviously and then like the whole time relativity thing whatever so what they did was they put him in relativity and so he came back around so he was younger i guess like he was basically there to train the next him because they needed somebody who could do it somebody who hadn't been in battle yet to do what ender eventually would need to do also throughout the entire trick they were playing on him this whole time which mind you we haven't really been seeing him do the these battles which were important because later on we find out they're freaking real he was there to basically be the mentor and he needed somebody else essentially to pull the trigger because he wasn't able to because of everything he saw in battle because he had lived and he 
was older, they needed someone very young to be able to do it who hasn't gone through it yet, and they needed somebody who they could essentially kind of manipulate into doing it, but they needed somebody intelligent as well, like Ender to be able to pull it off, but somebody who they also could get to do it, and it was very messed up, and that was why the twist was so big, and we're missing that moment here. <laughs> Officer on deck. AB. Hook. Oh! He wasn't supposed to see them yet. He was still freaking isolated. He was upset about it. He couldn't see his friends. He didn't know they were here yet until all of a sudden he realized they were his squad he was commanding and yet he still didn't see them. He had to talk to them through comms. He didn't see them in person until like after the war was finished. Why did they show them now? I thought you were iced. We were gonna have to have Ding take over. That was never gonna happen. Salam alai. Salam, Commander. They would not have been saying salam. Like what? Like I said earlier, religion. This this was like forbidden. Like you couldn't do. It was like you didn't do that. You. It was secretive, and that's why it was so special. That was like such a special moment. And like he would just say it out loud. It's crazy that this whole time My these gosh. were all real. They appear to have a population growth rate that's unsustainable. For now, they're contained on their planet. Also, we didn't get to see their planet until the very final fight. The problem is like Ender thought these were all just games, like simulations. Like it was just like a game and like, I mean, he would know in his mind, okay, this is more than just a game, but he was so caught up in the mindset of like, oh, it's just a game. It's just a simulation, it's just training. They didn't really get to this point yet because he was just doing simulations of other battles. And that's why it was such a big deal at the end when he eventually did blow up the planet because he thought it was a simulation. Seeing the planet this early on, and seeing everything, I feel like it's taking away from how crazy it was at the end there. After it happened, the author did such an incredible job of almost humanizing and having you empathizing with the buggers after they had already been wiped out by Ender, unknowingly by Ender, and like it's starting early on, you know? So it's kind of taking away the pacing that almost needed to happen that made it so special. Like we literally cut out the whole storyline of <laughs> the third invasion already happening. Really people were on their way to the planet. Second of all, they would have not had the footage of the planet like that. They didn't know what it was like on the surface, obviously, but real people were on the way and like that's really important for later when you find out what was happening and if they don't leave in that twist, that is gonna be like, what the heck? Do Sierra now! Bernard, watch your speed! Think you're closing too fast! Duh! Was it Dink that did that? Fail? What? You can't absorb he did these kind of losses. War isn't a game where you get to reboot and start over. Sir, I can't win if I don't take any risk. Just don't try and control everything. Let Bean improvise in the mop-ups. You focus on the big picture. No, they didn't really interfere much with like telling him, oh, let Bean do this and that. Like obviously like that happened, but I thought that was like Petra made a mistake at one point and then she freaked out and like couldn't do it. But like he didn't lose a single battle. He didn't actually, I mean, he lost people at some point and like at some other points it was like, like losing soldiers, like a lot of them, but like he didn't actually lose, lose. So tomorrow Colonel Rackham will run your final simulation. Oh, we're finally on the final simulation? What happens? You'll be ready to face the real enemy. Why are we not showing how, like, literally so like, unbelievably exhausted he was? He was, like, passing out while doing these. Like, there was just so much more that happened here. Like, he literally was, like, ready to give up and quit. And that's what made it so much more crazy, you know? And then it explained why they pushed him so hard because it was freaking really happening. What if they could talk to us? They can't. Dissection show no vocal cords. What? There are other ways to communicate. Why is he talking to Petra like this? Like, Petra was having a freaking, like, existential crisis at this moment. What if they could think to one another? What if we could think to them? Why is he having this conversation with Petra? They didn't even know! They didn't know it was him who was graduating command school. Like, he didn't tell them on purpose because he didn't want to stress them out. He's not ready. You're never ready. You go when you're ready enough. I'm pretty sure Mazer Rackham was the one who was like, he's just, he's almost done. He's so close. And Graf was the one who was trying to say like, oh, you know, he needs rest. He needs rest because he obviously like grew an attachment to him. I'm like, why are they switching up what the characters are doing? Why not just keep it how it was? Hey, there's the home planet. They're waiting. Maybe they think we come in peace. I don't think Mazer intends for us to find- And also, Mazer, Ender thought he was playing against him 
the whole time, like, his programming of the computer. And, like, before this battle, he was like, I'm going to hit you with everything I have. And Ender was frustrated because he was like, this isn't fair. Like, this is just too much. Like, this is an unfair game. But in reality, it was real. It was exactly how they were. And it was going to be, like, an impossible task to get out of. And nobody knew how he was going to do it. And they were all like, oh, my gosh, we're going to lose. We're going to freaking lose this war. And, like, the buggers are just going to take us over. We don't have that context here. And also, his friends here are, like, I feel like questioning him too much. The way they established it was, like, he was the commander. Like, they listened to him, you know, it was very militaristic and like here, like they're friendly and like, yeah, they were friends and they were close, but he always would preface like, I was their commander and like, they knew it and that was what it took to be a good commander was having kind of that separation there. Ender, the enemy's gate is down. Yeah, that's what Bean said, but we missed the whole entire freaking context. We don't have the context to that scenario. Like, we don't realize what that moment actually meant to him because we didn't see it in this movie and, like, it wasn't fully fleshed out exactly the importance of it. Like, that was huge. Like, we didn't even see that he was stressed out about this. What the heck? And, like, these were supposed to be real people and that's what made it so much more heartbreaking is they were actual fighters and stuff. Fire now! That's it. It's so anticlimactic. Like, there was so much more that went into it. Like, we didn't even see the gravity of the situation. <laughs> Felt so watered down. It was crazy when he did that. And it was almost like he was doing something that he thought was going to, like, upset them. Because, like, oh, I'm, like, messing up with their game. I'm not playing by their rules. Wait, why is the planet not exploding? Wait, is it happening now? What's going on? Give me false color. The heck? We're not done yet. Okay. But we are so screwed. No, we're not. Fire picks, we're out of time. All right, okay, so now we shot the planet. But like, they wouldn't have been shocked. They just thought it, like the whole time, I feel like there's this disconnect. They thought it was just like a, like a game, you know? Why are they acting like they feel like it's real? We did it! All right, yes! okay. Yes! Yes! Ender was not cheering at the end of this though. The friends were. How about that? Game over. But like nobody's like crying, screaming, praying. Like they were all like freaking out. What are they showing them? What the heck? The friends were not a part of this. This was Ender's thing. I feel like we're losing focus on Ender. Why are these images in the program? Ender, we won. What do you mean we won? I beat him. He runs the simulations. There was no other way. Like, threw that in at the end. I mean, that's what they said, you know, but it's like, you didn't feel it. It's a lot of, like, saying don't show. Petra, you're not even here right now. And neither is Bernard. Like, why is Bernard in this? They came to Earth to establish a colony. We chased them away, and in 50 years, they never returned. I will bear the shame of this genocide forever. No. You will be remembered as a hero. We also missed the entire subplot of Peter and Valentine, which was very important, especially for like this. Like that was a very important plot line, like how they were being kind of the political writers that they were. I stay with him just so he's not alone. Y'all didn't freaking see him until way later. Like, it's just like, why are y'all here right now anyway? <laughs> like y'all should have even been in the same room. I feel like they gave Petra what a lie was to him or what Bean was to him. Like, you know, she of course was there, especially early on, but she wasn't as close with him. Yeah, you know, we also missed a lot of his dream Bouncer. moments while he was having these battles and stuff. I guess they're trying to show it right now, but like it wasn't the same. We're leaving an oxygen balanced environment. Ender, stop! But we didn't figure this out until we get to the, to the colony. Why do you just run outside the planet? What the heck? I saw this place. Wait, why is it? What are you talking we about? We were not all, are we the not gonna go to the colony? To me. Okay, we are just gonna go ahead and skip on that part, I guess. There's one alive still? What? There was not one alive. It was the, the egg or whatever was the only thing. The queen wasn't, if that's a queen, there was a no queen. They all died, that was the point. And he was supposed to help them rebuild one day. The speaker for the dead, which I don't know why Maserakum said that earlier, he was the one. 
Is this just like a figment of the imagination or is this like she's actually alive here? You're dying. Okay, so you are alive, which... So like this is how they chose to convey this moment. I feel like a big part of it was that he killed all of them. Like there was no, you know, and then he discovered this later. I feel like it takes away almost from like how genius it was to have them having been like communicated in his mind, like the way they communicate without words, without any way they could from the whole time when it's like somebody is actually there versus like they did it almost from beyond the grave in a sense, you know? I'll travel the universe and carry with me a precious cargo because I have a promise to keep. <sighs> I'm kind of glad that that's over. <laughs> I'm so sorry, y'all. I just, I really did not enjoy that movie. I feel like just coming off of the book, going to the movie, it felt watered down and dull and it just lacked so many important moments. Part of me wonders like, would it have been better as a series? Probably, because I feel like they needed more time. There was just so much context just cut out that just was very important. Like, I just feel like you couldn't lose the context or else it just wasn't the same anymore. It almost felt childish in a sense during the kid parts. There was just not a lot of depth, I feel like is the best way to put it. I know they're kids, but the brilliance of the story is that these kids have so much more to them. There's just so much more that goes into the story, so much more, like the character of Ender here, I just thought was just not how he was in the book at all. And we just lost so much of him and he was such a good character. He was so fun to read about as a character and there was just so much tragedy surrounding the story in all elements and I feel like we missed out on it like just so much like so many things were changed first I was like okay maybe they're gonna have to just change some stuff just to kind of get the story compacted but as long as in general it follows the premise then that's okay you know like sometimes they do have to do things like that I said at the beginning like I can understand hiring a little bit older of an actor for the movie adaptation like I do kind of get it but I feel like also on the other hand we missed a lot of just how insane of a concept it was that these were little, little kids at first, like six years old at first, and then they progressively got older, but they were so young going into this. It started off as simulations and stuff, and then like even at the end, that just felt so lackluster, and it was just so not really how it, it was like kind of what happened, but like not fully. It seemed like, okay, we have to hit these big scenes in this movie because they were in the book and like they're kind of important, but like we're not gonna really develop them much more, like show the nuance of the situation or like full on emotion, like all the characters just kind of felt a little bit dull. Certain things were changed and it just took away so much meaning. It felt like they were almost trying to make this movie feel kind of more like a like a young adult dystopian type movie. Especially, there's a lot that came out around this time. And obviously this is a sci-fi, not a dystopian, but it kind of felt like that almost. And I know that the book deals with young characters, but it doesn't read like a young adult book. Like it, it feels very mature and there's a lot of mature elements to it as well. So the twist at the end, I just didn't feel the emotion because we didn't have the build up to it. We didn't see how exhausted Ender was going into this. We didn't see him struggling with these dreams. And then when you got this big massive reveal at the end, it was like, oh my gosh, that's what happened. And here it's just, just kind of like, okay. You know, ah, I don't know. So all in all, Ender's Game became one of my favorite books of all time. The movie though, just disappointing. This is not, not, not a fun time. Especially coming from just having read the book and it being so incredible. I can definitely understand the bad ratings for the Ender's Game movie. I'm kind of curious what people felt about it if they didn't read the book. Did they still think it was a bad movie or did they like it? Ender's Game was an easy five stars, maybe even a six star. So freaking good. I don't typically rate movies, even though I have a whole other channel with my husband where we do movie commentaries, but I don't typically give movies a rating. But in this video, I think we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it out of 10 though. I would give the Ender's Game movie maybe a three, like a three out of 10. So that's pretty low. But regardless of how I feel about the movie, it will not change my feelings of the book. I'm still gonna love and cherish the book and probably reread it again one day. But I also did get the second book in the series. Speaking Speaker for the Dead. I'm looking forward to reading this one to continuing Ender's journey. I know there's a ton of other books in the series as well. So if I like this one, hopefully I can keep on reading them. The next book up in this little series I'm doing of reading best-selling books and watching their bad movie adaptations.
adaptations is Aragon. So make sure you're subscribed so you can stick around to see my video on this book.